There's been a lot of talk about these Minchin Beagle cams. They're basically time lapse for dummies. And Minchin sent one over for us to take a look at. So let's look at the Beagle cam. Let's make some stuff. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be talking all about the Minchin Beagle Cam and we're gonna be showing it off, assuming it works. I have no idea. The setup process was actually pretty easy. I used the phone application and went ahead and just got this thing connected to my sandbox network because I do not want this thing talking to the outside world because I don't know what this is sending back and probably neither do you. Something to note there. They come in a few different sizes and from what I can tell it's just a bigger micro SD card in it. It's just a micro SD card so uh, theoretically buy the cheapest one put a better card in it. It is a generic micro SD card but to give it a fair chance I'm going to use exactly what it came with. We've got a Prusa Mini here that we're going to be time lapsing today. And this is the Prusa Mini that we upgraded recently with the E3D Revo Micro. We'll card to that video so you guys can take a look. But recently on a previous Print Fix Friday, I talked about my buddy John from Proper Printing who had a bit of a tough time. Well, I'm here to give John a hard time, real hard. Let's swap this out. While I'm doing that, one thing to note, by the way, this is the great thing about the Revo. I can do this quite literally without looking at it. One thing to note is the Beagle Cam does come with both USB-B, which is your standard cable that would fit into a Prusa Mark IIIs. But the Prusa Mini, on the other hand, actually requires a micro USB, which it also does come with. Now, we're putting in a, a nozzle that very few of you have had hands on, and a lot of you want a video on, and I will say, soon, TM. We gotta get our cable, and while we're doing that, we're gonna get this thing powered up, and you'll hear it talks to you. And that's a little weird, but fine. We don't need the USB-B cable where we're going. And it does also come with a USB power supply. Now, something to note for those that don't know, you can subscribe and I would greatly appreciate it. And hey, support us on Patreon if that is something that you would like to do. But also, this is part of my garage. It is unair conditioned unless I am doing live streams and then I will turn on the little portable air conditioner that we have in here. That means it gets very, very humid here in Tampa, Florida. Successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. Well, I'm glad you successfully connected to the Wi-Fi. Thank you for letting me know. We got the micro USB plugged in. I'm gonna come around and there's a USB port on the back of the mention. Remember, if you get it wrong the first two times, try the first time one more time. And now we have it totally connected. Now we're gonna go ahead and go to the app and we're gonna take a look at the entire system. Now, looking at the phone, we are able to click on the printer. It is online and uh, hi, I'm over here. It is a little bit lagged, which is totally acceptable, right? Ultimately, this is a $70 camera or so. So there are certain things that, you know, I'm going to accept and certain things that I just won't. So we're going to set it. The one thing I will complain about this Minchin Beagle Cam is that it does not have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom of it. Now, I was going to put one. I I've got some heat set inserts, but the base is totally hollow. So there are some printed parts where you can make your own arms, but if there is one critique that I could have for it before even trying it, it is that I really want quarter 20 because I could have just put it on this magic arm that I set up for the video. So looking at everything here, we can see that we have a print, but the thing we don't have on the mini is one, power, but two, filament. And like I said, we're in Florida, and that means, well, it's a little humid out here. And since we have a beautiful black nozzle, maybe we should use some beautiful black rough filament with it. Of course, review coming soon. This is the uh, Sunloom S2 dry box. Let me know if you guys want a review on this thing. We're gonna set the PETG to 65 degrees centigrade. Now we are gonna go ahead and get everything loaded. So the first thing we want to do here on the mini is load filament. Now for those wondering, this is carbon fiber reinforced PETG it is from 3DX tech and I do quite like it. Okay, geez, that's so aggressive mini. Anyways, we are going to go ahead and load in this wonderful filament. Love me some carbon fiber. Oh yes, carbon fiber. Remember, if you don't have an obsidian nozzle, don't do that with your E3D Revo because it will destroy it. So please don't do that. 0.6 millimeter as well. 
Uh, by the way, this is the exact size nozzle that John from Proper Printing destroyed uh, when he slammed his printer with the Revo into part of his print. So hopefully we don't do that on this one. But as you can see on my phone here, we've got his skull. So we're going to go ahead and print it. Although I guess I should look for some things like time lapses. Going to connect to the printer. We are connected. Should be happy. We can see on the screen where our temperatures are. Then we can come into here. We can see that it is a Prusa. Okay, you don't have the mini on here, I guess. It said it did. Okay. It'll be custom. Not what I wanted, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Go ahead and we'll save that. So we have our G code list. We can move our printer. Wonderful. Good. That's exactly what we're looking for as well. Auto time lapse videos. Good. That's what we want. This is not as straightforward as I was hoping. I wonder if it's inside of settings. That's all fine. Delay 500 milliseconds. I don't want any extra filling. We will save that. Oh, okay. Time lapse video frame rate is between five and 25. Okay. Then yes, we will use 15 and then we'll just double the speed. Not my preferred way of doing this, by the way. Have our normal record settings. Um, yeah, you know, it's 32 gigs. That should be enough. Let's do it. And we're gonna time lapse. Now the thing that I don't see is where it's going to park the printer. So I wonder if that is something. I'm guessing it's just gonna choose a location. I don't know what that's gonna be, but I'm guessing it's just gonna choose a location. Well, I guess there's nothing to do but to do it. So we'll go ahead and get that rolling. There we go. 399 layers. See how this thing goes. This view is not my favorite, honestly, but it's gonna have to work, right? We don't really have anything other than that. But yeah, we have our dry box. We have some carbon fiber PETG. We have the beautiful dark horse that is the E3D Obsidian, and we should be going. And I do like that it does have a phone app, but I didn't see a desktop app. And if there is one, it wasn't that easy to find. They're still working on this. In fact, when we got our Beagle Cam, it came with explicit instructions via Twitter DM to make sure that you update the firmware. They've changed some things, since when they shipped it to when I'm supposed to look at it. The Prusa Mini is doing exactly what we expect because of course the G code that is on the SD card. So I put the G code onto the SD card of the Beagle Cam. It's exactly from Prusa Slicer. So it should just run the G code. Now I'll be curious to see how it actually handles the layers and where it parks the tool head. I'm used to having everything go to one spot, park the tool head, take the photo and come back. But we're gonna have to compare it to one of our Mark III S's. So we'll make the exact same part not in this nice fancy filament, but we'll make the exact same part on one of our Mark III S's with the traditional time lapse so that you guys can also see it. In fact, I'll have it on the screen, put them on either side of me. That should be fun. All right, there goes layer number one. You know what? It does say that it's compatible. There it is, Prusa Mini Plus, right there. Well, let's see how it prints. We're rolling with the 0 0.6, 0 0.2 millimeter layers. Let's we'll see how it prints. I'll be back. Well, it's done. Um, it doesn't look great. We're going to take a look at the actual video. It's half a meg. So let's see what it looks like. Oh, hey, you know what? It's really not a bad time lapse. I mean, it's not great, but it's not bad. Obviously, we need some tweaking and tuning. This was literally just a random profile for some carbon fiber filament, and I sent it. So it eh, probably wasn't the best. Also, I got a new shirt because it's another day and I feel like this is very appropriate. We've got some things about this camera, right? One of the big things for me is that the Mini doesn't know that it's printing over USB. It doesn't have any idea. So normally you'd be able to quickly go in and change the Z offset from the main menu, but no, you got to go through a couple of menus to actually get to it. And the Z offset was not set correctly. I do not know why because this printer has printed perfectly fine before. Uh, the Obsidian did a great job. I mean, we have got good surface finish where we weren't moving. And obviously I need to have more retraction. I just went with the Beagle's stock settings. It does say that it should work with the Prusa Mini, but I can't, yeah, at least it doesn't for me. Maybe there's another firmware update that I need to do, but I will say in terms of plug and play time-lapse, 
that's not bad. It's not bad. Now, they run about 70 US dollars plus shipping and all of that, although I do believe it is free shipping on their website. Gripes about it, obviously, are going to be the fact that it doesn't have a quarter 20 mount on the bottom of it, which makes it effectively useless in terms of mounting things. So, I'm going to design up a plate for that that just has a quarter 20 nut, and we'll also have one that fits a uh, heat set insert. We'll link to all that in the description so you guys can just go ahead and adapt it to a quarter 20. But I wanted to give this thing as close to a realistic try as possible without messing with anything, right? Because if I go in and I start messing with stuff, there's no chance. Some things about the printer. I don't think the settings were well on the printer either. I think it needed more retraction. And when we look at the actual Beagle camera, inside of the settings, we can see that it has 15 FPS. It goes up to 25. I wish it went to 30. That's how we run all of our other time lapses. And it's a little frustrating that it doesn't have that, but whatever, hopefully it just gives me raw photos. Now, I will say I'm actually recording this in Polyterra fossil gray inside right now, streaming live on Maker Deck, and it looks a lot better. But that's also because I've tuned that better as well. It's going to take quite a bit longer too. We're estimating about an entire hour longer with reasonably identical settings. Looking at the system though, we can see it has a 500 millisecond delay, which is fine. A retract length of five millimeters. I do not think that when it was making its move to take the photo, it was retracting. You could clearly see it oozing out of the nozzle. So to me, it was not retracting at all. And that explains a lot of the damage that we see on the side of the print. In fact, I haven't even taken this print off the build plate, so let's see how that goes. Ow, hot build plate. Our buddy John here uh, ha has got some artifacting. I think if we had turned the fan up to 100%, it probably would have ran better for us, but nothing of X-Acto knife in five minutes won't fix. Some issues with the overhangs. Again, I think that all comes down to the actual settings of the Mini itself. And unfortunately, I am not able to override what the Beagle Cam is doing. And that is one thing you can do in Octoprint. You can override the G-code and force it to whatever fan value that you want. So point to Octoprint there. The point to the Beagle Cam is that we are using a DSLR inside. And the photos from this look pretty good, although I do not have an actual set of photos. It just has a video. Not a huge fan of that. I prefer the raw photos. But from an editing standpoint, this is quite a bit easier. Now, I could not put this camera on its side because again, it's not set up to do that. I did take the extra filling. That's the D retract distance. It was set to like one millimeter. I took it to zero because I know there's no need to do it, especially with carbon fibers. And the filling speed, which is the D retract speed is 25, which I still don't think it's doing any retraction when it's moving away. That could be a software thing, could be a hardware thing. I honestly don't know for sure. I will say the picture quality looks pretty good. I mean, obviously I can't get it located where I want, but we'll have to compare and see how smooth it is versus the other camera, which of course you guys are seeing on screen. I haven't seen it yet. We will also make sure to take that one and make it 15 FPS as well. So at least the speeds of everything should be reasonable. Something to note is that this happens so much faster than my DSLR. My DSLR is from 2006. I bought it brand new when I was 16 years old and I'm 32 now. It's been a bit of time. And that means that thing's a little bit slow. It takes about three and a half ish seconds to do everything where this thing only took about half a second or so. It moves away, takes the photo, comes back real quick. That is the benefit of having something like this. Now they call themselves the watchdog of 3D printing. And if it had watchdog features, I'd be inclined to agree. As far as I can tell, it doesn't because it did not alert for what is very clearly a watchdog issue. We've got some crazy spiky hair on just one side. So it's our two-face, if you will. I think it's a good camera but I think you need to have a very specific need and you need to not be able to have another setup. Raspberry Pis are slowly coming back. Adafruit brings them in stock Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. From time to time, keep an eye on some Twitters. We'll link to that in the description so you guys can find them. And of course, Best Buy normally has Pi Canna Kit Ultimates in stock for like a hundred bucks, but it comes with everything you would basically need to run a Pi. Do I think that a Pi setup is a better value? Honestly, no. I don't because this is a one solid package. There is nothing else to it. It just works. 
and I like that. I don't like that I can only run one per printer. With a Pi, you can of course hook up multiple printers to them, especially with the Pi 4, 4 and 8 gig models. This thing is one printer, one thing. But if you want pretty time lapses, it seemed to do a pretty good job, so I definitely can't complain there. But do remember, if you are going to put them on TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, it has to be vertical video, so you have to turn this thing sideways, which, um, it's gonna be a problem. It doesn't have the ability to tilt itself left or right. And that means when you're sideways like this, unless you're able to get a good angle by just rotating it, you're pretty much stuck. And there's no good way to do that stock. Now, I looked on printables. There are some printable parts for this where you are able to give it some more degrees of freedom. But I would like to see that in a future hardware revision. I like that it has an IR sensor and that it can do night vision. Of course, we use the studio lights for now 24 hours. I am not excited for my power bill. But it actually seems to work pretty well. I did shut off the lights in between. We did have a print failure. And if you'll notice, that's the other Sunlu dry box. The S2 does not feed this carbon fiber in a way that allows it to pull without pulling the whole damn thing over. So 10 points to Gryffindor here. The print overall came out fine. I mean, obviously this is not sellable. This was a joke to begin with. But stay tuned because we have some really awesome prints coming up with the Obsidian Nozzle. Overall, I think there is some value here, but those of you that are more of the tinkerers and the hackers will likely get more value from something like a Raspberry Pi than you would from something like this. Those of you that want to just plug it in and have it work, yeah, this kind of solves that problem. And of course, you can log into this. Now, the nice thing that this does for you and I think there is some value here, is that it allows you to remotely monitor your prints. I would love to see it integrated with something like Quinley Vision or Spaghetti Detective now, Obico. Hopefully we'll be interviewing them pretty soon, but it's not bad. I think it does have a very specific use case compared to a Pi, which of course can be utilized for many other things. But for those of you that want the peace of mind that don't want to deal with the BS, I think it pretty much ticks all the boxes. Now, I did not check its network traffic, so I have no idea what it's phoning home. I know it's phoning home something, but I don't know what it's phoning home. It is nice that I can check this thing from anywhere, so if I check in and the print is turning into a big plate of spaghetti, I can cancel it. But a wise cam and a smart plug can do that for less than 50 bucks. So take that with whatever grain of salt that you want. Now, a wise cam's not going to do the nice fancy time lapses unless you hack them. This does, so if you do want to start putting out time lapses for social media, that ain't a bad way to do it. Now, I did have it also record the full video, so I'll be curious to see what that looks like. I gotta pull everything off. But yeah, that's really all I got. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the Beagle Cam. And again, big thanks to Minchin for sending this over. Of course, again, no money was exchanged hands. We did get the product in exchange for a review, but all the opinions are mine, and they don't get to see this before it goes live, so is what it is. And my experiences are that of someone who really doesn't know Octoprint. Like, one of my staff helps me with it. That's valuable that this thing was that easy to set up. Now, obviously the settings still need um, quite a bit of tuning, but you know, it's not bad out of the gate. I will be curious to see when they get support for the Prusa Mini because it does say it is available on their website. It just doesn't work. So it's not in the, not in the app. But yeah, 70 bucks. There's some value, not for everybody, but I think we all kind of knew this going into it. I dig it. Let me know what you guys think down in those comments, but that's all I have for you all today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Oh, geez. Okay, well, you're, you, you, maybe you can go like that. Will, will you work now? I don't know. Let's hope. Hey, thanks for watching this video, and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters who assist in removing the last thing from this list, unfortunately. The rest of it's going to take time. <laughs> Whose name is listed right next to me at the $5 tier and higher. Remember, if you want to get your name on that list, join our Patreon or YouTube channel members for $5 or more. Right below me will be the entire upgrade for the Prusa Mini, where we installed the Revo Micro now carrying a beautiful Obsidian nozzle, as well as the MM10 upgrade kit. And next to that will be some time lapses. Enjoy. And oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe because a uh, video on the Obsidians coming soon. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.
Obsidian. Yeah, one-handed nozzle changes when cold. Freaking great.